Good evening. Good evening, my name's Tony. And I'm Kat and we're really pleased to be able to spend this evening with you. We are indeed. I hope you've had a wonderful weekend and a great week. Uh, we spent some of our time this week making things for Christmas. Yeah, it's been a busy week, hasn't it? But we've been able to do a little bit and start our Christmas prep. So I decorated our Christmas wreath for our front door. And I had a go at making an advent calendar using chocolates. Yeah, that bit nearly didn't quite work, did it? Because I almost, almost got to the chocolates first. You did indeed. You did indeed. Never mind. Um, so last week, uh, we had a really good conversation off the back of a talk from Ali about community. Yeah, Ali gave us a great word, didn't she, on community last week yeah. and, and brought a great message to us. And then we jumped onto Zoom at the end of the the service and had a chat with each other and really kind of talked about what community meant to us as individuals and as as, as people and, and shared with each other about how, how our experiences and how we can put that sort of stuff into practice as well. Yeah, it was really challenging, wasn't it? It was yeah. challenging, but extremely good. But really, really good, yeah. But what have we got on this week? Well, this week we have a talk from Fiona and we also have our regular worship sessions. Yep, and we of course have everybody's favourite lockdown live. We do indeed, yes. And then we'll be following up at the end of the service with a Zoom meeting as we normally do. Details will be in the chat below a bit later on. Absolutely, so we look forward to seeing you there. So, if we, before we hand over to Steve. I think it would be a really good thing to pray for, for this evening. Absolutely, absolutely. You'd like to lead us in that too? Yeah, absolutely no problem. Heavenly Father, we just invite your Holy Spirit to be with us this evening. We ask that you open our eyes, you open our hearts, and you open our minds to those, the words and the worship and the fellowship of this evening. Lord, bless us and allow us to be closer to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Steve, it's over to you. Hi everyone. Hi. 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 I'm here with Hayley. Welcome to Lockdown Life. We're going to be looking at the whole issue of faith in Jesus Christ. Before we uh, chat about that, Hayley, tell us a few things about yourself. Okay, I'm Hayley. I've lived in Farnborough all my life, which is 41 years. Uh, married for 16 and have two children. And how long how long have you been a Christian? How long have you put your faith in Jesus for? So I really found faith when I was about 14, 15 through my friends at school who belonged to a local church. And then as my teenage years sort of went on and then I found a boyfriend, it sort of all went a bit downhill. And then I came back to faith. 11 years ago when my husband was diagnosed with a brain tumour right? and he wanted to come back, he wanted to go to church mm. and that was it. What and made you, then, sorry, hey, what, 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 what made you decide to put your faith in Jesus? What, who is Jesus to you? He, Jesus to me is my best friend the one person that will always listen, is always there. What does it mean to you to have faith in Jesus? What's, what's Jesus done for you or will do for you that you might describe yourself as having faith in Jesus? Because I know when we were chatting earlier that that phrase came up, faith in Jesus. To help guide me to be more like him, um, to know that when I'm sinning that I know it's wrong because of my love and faith that I do have in Jesus. What, what, what difference would you say that Jesus has made to your life? What's, what's he done for you? I'm more of a understanding person, um, not so opinionated I am opinionated we all are 
Yeah. But I also yeah. I've learned through my faith to take a step back and actually think it's not about me. It's about the other person. Um, and just to, to be more of an open an open book, really, an open person. Where do you think you, your life might have gone if you hadn't come to know Jesus? You, you described him earlier when we were chatting as your saviour. What, what would your um, what might your life have looked like? What what did he save you from? I could have easily gone off the rails. Could have easily been out every night, socialising. I'm quite a social person, mm. but be socialising in the pub, going to nightclubs, doing things when I really I should be at home with my family. Um, yeah, just not not being a nice person for me. Really? It would be not being a nice person. Mm. Being yeah, just. A, I could be, before I found faith, I was, I could be quite mean, in all honesty. Okay. Because um, very often, you know, if, if, if you ask uh, somebody with theological training or whatever, what, what having your faith in Jesus means and, and, and what does it mean for Jesus to be your saviour, very often people, people like me will, will launch into, well, Jesus saves us from eternal punishment. He saves us from the judgment of God and that. And, and those things are true. But what I'm hearing you saying is that it's, it's not just that Jesus saves you when, you know, when you die, you wait until you die and then he saves you and you, you shall go to heaven. But, but his salvation of you as a person from what I'm hearing from you, hey, begins the moment you came to know him as yes. saviour and, and transformation took place in you. Is that true? Am I putting words in your mouth? Or no, does... that is very true. Yep. Definitely. Um, you know, we're put on this planet to spread the word of the Lord, you know, to you, that's, that's our job as a Christian is to spread the love. And I would never have done that if I never, if I didn't find Jesus. Wow. Has, has, so, your, has your faith always been, you know, absolutely rock solid and you've been full on for Christ and full on involved in the church ever since you knew him? Or have you gone through no, you know, sticky patches? I go through quite a lot of patches where I've sort of become really disconnected. Um, so the last sort of few months I've been feeling quite disconnected. I think because of not going to church regularly, not doing Sunday school, not seeing my church family, it's been it has been quite difficult. So, so lockdown sounds like in terms spiritually, in terms of your faith, has been quite a tough season. How are things now? Yeah. So the last sort of few weeks, I have sort of been meeting up with some friends from my church family hmm. who have actually listened to how I've been feeling and what's been going on in my life of how I've been feeling and they've actually helped me to well one we sort of we prayed which prayer is just everything really um and being when I'm disconnected I I'll be honest I don't pray very often when I'm feeling disconnected which is really the wrong thing but that's that was just how I was feeling so it's to come back to prayer to to reconnect with God to, and my faith so having friends as speaking to friends recently has really helped me to so have that the, connection back it's the people from your church family so I'm, I'm hearing that, that have really strengthened your faith in recent weeks and, yes. and, and you've it sounds a little bit like perhaps you walked a little bit away from God, maybe. Would that be fair yeah. to say? And, yeah. you know, as, as happens to many of us from year to year sometimes. And But you've come, you've been perhaps brought home a little bit in recent weeks. Have you found that, that Jesus has kind of wandered off and lost interest in you? Or did you find that Jesus was still there? No, Jesus was always there. It was just, it was me that's 
had wandered. Right. Because Jesus doesn't wander. He's always there. It was just my mind wandering. Who's been the person who's most influenced you, would you say, or most helped you, most helped you over the years to keep your faith strong? What person or people have, have helped you in that regard? Um, my church family from St. John's. Right. So we do have quite a few different sort of groups within St. John's. Mm. Um, and I joined the choir quite um, a few years back at St. John's and that has brought me closer to my faith because I find worshipping is where I really become open mind, more open-minded, more closer to, to God. That's fascinating. That's something I'd like to explore in a lot more detail. But time uh, is <laughs> against us, Haley. So we're, we're going to have to wrap up. Thank you so much for sharing some of your journey and being so open and honest about your, your faith journey with us. I really appreciate it. Um, You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, Haley. Bye, you. everyone. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye. Yeah.
is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me We thank you for the opportunity to worship as a community. We thank you for the opportunity to share in your glory, even though we are apart. We're glad and thankful that you once again are faithful and bring us closer together to you through worship. We ask, Lord, that you will help us carry the spirit of joy and celebration and the feeling of your presence throughout the rest of this evening. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I love having that opportunity to worship and feel feel like it's with other people even though we're not in the same room. It's really nice to have that shared experience, isn't it? It is indeed, it is indeed. It's a, a different uh, skill 
to be able to watch online and worship, but it's well worth doing. Yeah, really enjoyed it. But we've we've got more to come this evening, haven't we? And so yeah. we're, we've got Fiona bringing us the word in a few moments and um, a little bit more worship later on before we move on to our, our second half of the evening. So, uh, so uh, before we ha go on to, to Fiona, I think you'd like to pray for... Mm, yes. Yeah. Father, we thank you for this opportunity this evening to be able to sit under your word and to hear the message that you have for us and that you've given Fiona to bring to us. We just ask for other that you will just send your spirit now to sit with us and to be with us, to open our hearts and minds and ears, to listen to what you have to t say to us this evening. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hello everyone, today I'm reflecting on how we can stand firm in our faith in difficult times. Not by power, not by might, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. These words came from a song I heard when we had a missionary organisation visit my school for a week. I went to a Roman Catholic girls school in Liverpool. We all wore grey uniform and blue blouses. My RE lessons were usually as dull as my uniform. This praise week was not a normal experience. These lyrics and the fact the team was led by a 20-something good-looking guy were the only things I can remember from this experience. It was my first charismatic evangelical teaching and I was transferred. I don't know how many of the 1,200 pupils came to know God that week but it was definitely more than any of my 14 years in Catholic education. The head teacher who ran the school definitely took some steps of faith to invite this young charismatic group to come to the school, play guitars, talk in tongues, pray over people and share the gospel. Even though many of the teachers disapproved and parents were unsure, she took a step of faith and invited them and hoped she felt success at the end of it. I can remember standing in front of the cross and singing the song, not by power, not by might, but by the Spirit of the Lord, and crying before the cross. This memory and the Bible verse has been flooding back to me in recent weeks. And as I have tried to make sense of a difficult situation that are being made in my office, or even when trying to understand the impact of virus in my life. The lyrics came from Zechariah 4, verse 6. In this chapter, God talks about how the spirit can flatten a mountain to the ground. I've walked some hills, and even if these were flattened, it would be some amazing feat. But to flatten a mountain where the mountain is the landscape, if it was flattened, it would leave such a great hole and it would be impossible to imagine. Yet God says by faith, we can move mountains with the help of the Holy Spirit. Let me read the passage to you. Then the angel who talked to me returned and woke me up like someone awakened from sleep. He asked me, what do you see? I answered, I see a gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lamps on it, with seven channels to the lamp. And there are also two olive trees by it, one on the right bowl and the other on its left. I asked the angel who talked with me, what are these, my Lord? He answered, do you know what these are? No, my Lord, I replied. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. What are you, mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone to shout of it. God bless it, God bless it. Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hand of Zerubbabel has laid the foundations of this temple. His hands will also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. We live in quite a world at the moment and our faith is being tested in more ways than we are normally used to. I know lots of people at the moment who need to know that they don't need strength or might but just trust in God and the faith of the Holy Spirit to help them move the mountains in their life. We might be in a position where we've lost a job or on furlough we might have a sick friend or a family member who we want to get 
want to get better, or maybe we've just got a bill we don't know how to pay. We might have decisions to make at work that are for the good of company, but not the individual person. Maybe we want to see a relative or a friend who needs support, but is vulnerable and we don't want to risk making them unwell. Or maybe we just have a prayer we need answering. There are so many unknowns at the moment and we really feel powerless in this struggle. Today, as a human race, we are feeling vulnerable. We, as a society, are on a pedestal. The normal functioning society has collapsed. We do not know how we can plan for the near future, how we can support our friends, how we can meet as a full church in person again without the possibility of hurting others. Turning to these verses can give us comfort. Zerubbabel was about to build a temple which seemed impossible, but God is saying, no, it is not impossible because you have me. God is also saying to us, you do not need the answers. You do not need the solutions. God has the right solution and can provide us with the strength and the skills that we need to deal with the challenges that, that are put in our lives. There are plenty of examples of this in the Bible, where people, by trusting in God and being filled with the Holy Spirit, have provided the strength to deal with their impossible situations. It was not Daniel who defeated the lions, but his trust and love for God, he continuously put God first. He did not know when he woke up in the morning and prayed to God if he would be alive the next day, but he knew he didn't have the power to object to the orders and that he had to trust in God and put him first. His strong relationship with God helped him to survive the lions. Moses did not know he was going to cross the sea with a caravan full of people who had been promised a new life. He didn't know how. He didn't have the strength or power, but he knew that God did. Joshua didn't have a mighty army to destroy the walls of the city. He didn't believe that instruments alone would cause the city walls to collapse. But trusting in God and doing what's right in God's eyes and victory was his. Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. At Pentecost, the disciples were hidden. They did not have the power or strength to stand up in front of people and share the gospel. They were not trusting in God. Jesus had left them and they had no plan. But when the Holy Spirit came, they didn't need a plan. They just needed to trust in God and great things happened. The current pandemic has hit me full first this week. I am frustrated. I can't see my family. A part of me worries about it. If I will ever see my 94 year old grandmother again. My friend's grandmother died in hospital this week and they had done everything right. She had been out. She had not been out. She had not seen the family, but she broke her wrist and had to go into hospital and caught COVID. The question why and how just repeats around my head. Work as discussed potential workload and the impact of working staff. And I have felt helpless. I can't get rid of the pandemic. I can't find new jobs. I don't have the answers. I am not the only one. You too might be feeling this helpless and questioning answers and have answers that need questioning. How can we use God's spirit to bring us peace? How do we trust in God, the Zerubbabel, Joshua, Moses, the disciples do? And trust that we don't need to have all the answers, all the strength, all the knowledge. We just need God's spirit to get us through. Scripture. We can turn to scripture. We can get strength from scripture, from seeing the outcomes of these crazy situations in the Bible, where they trust God and realise that God's plan is the answer. We can find strength in knowing God. From Proverbs. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and is safe. We can know his strength if we keep working alongside him. Prayer. This pandemic has taught me the importance of communication, talking with people, texting to remind people they are loved. Communication may have changed with our friends and family, but we must also keep communicating with God. Scream, shout, chat, laugh talk. God doesn't care how we pray, just that we are communicating and building a relationship. Once we are strong in God's knowledge and love, his Holy Spirit will do the rest. God's plan will be carried out. 
we will be better placed to support ourselves and others. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Thanks Fiona for a great message, but that's not the end of this evening. No it's not is it, We've, we're going to move on to Zoom in a few moments to carry on the conversation, spend some time together in fellowship, have some fun and just um, have a great evening together and Indeed. then also be able to have a chat about some of the things we've talked about this evening or Fiona's talked about this evening and take that conversation a bit further. So details will be in the chat just below and um, have a look at those and whether you've been and joined us before on Zoom or it's your first time, we'd love to see you there. So grab a drink and we'll be there in a few minutes. See you there. See you there.